Okay, I'm gonna make a uh, basic vanilla cake for our STA cook day. Um, so the first thing we're gonna do for this one is read the instructions. And so I've read through them a little bit. I've started my um, oven at 350 and uh, I've got my cake pans out but I haven't done anything to them quite yet. So the first thing it says to do is whisk three cups of flour, baking powder and salt into a bowl until it's combined. So basically we're going to take our dry measuring cup and we're going to measure out three cups of flour. When you're measuring out flour you want to grab a little bit too much, push it towards yourself to fill the cup a little bit and then swipe the top with the flat side of a butter knife. Most people don't have anything else to use so we can just do that. You can also sift the flour for cake. It adds a little bit of air into it and helps the cake rise, but today we're just going to do it really quick because this is just a basic cake. Okay, the baking powder, um, we're going to add one tablespoon of it. Important to make sure that you grab the tablespoon and not the teaspoon. Okay. Again, we level it off, push it towards you to fill up the spoon and put it in. I was making sure that it was actually one tablespoon of it. Okay, and then the last thing we need to add is the salt. So half a teaspoon of that. And that's a tablespoon, teaspoon, and the salt. Make sure that you add salt and not sugar, or sugar and not salt when you need to, because we've had that mistake happen before. Okay, again, level it off. It says to whisk it, so grab our trusty little whisk. If you don't have a whisk, you could use a fork. And just make sure that it's all combined like that. I like to make sure that there's no clumps in the flour as well, just because um, it can get a little bit clumpy when it's sitting for a bit. Okay. So once that's done, just set it to the side. Okay, all right. Next thing we're going to do is add the rest of the ingredients pretty much into a different bowl. So we're going to beat two sticks of butter and um, the sugar into the bowl. Where did I put my butter? There it is. So the butter, I've cut um, the sticks. They actually come as a stick, like that. Um, I've cut and then heated up just a little bit in the microwave so that they're soft. You don't want to melt them though, you just want to get them to be a little bit soft. So it's like 15 seconds in the microwave, okay? And then the sugar, we need one and one quarter cup. So I'm just going to use the same cup as the flour and you do the same measuring method. Dig down into the sugar, sweep it towards you. And then again, away. So that's one. And then a quarter cup of sugar. So now we big, um, beat this with our mixer. So we don't want to use a whisk for this because it would just get all stuck in the um, prongs. mixing something I want to make sure that before I do it the mixer works and so we did actually test that before um, we got it started. As I'm mixing I'm going to just scrape down the bowl with a spatula and make sure that all of it is actually getting incorporated because when you're baking it's accounting for that it's like chemistry you want to make it sure that it's pretty accurate and then just mix it one more time. All right, 
right, so you can see that the butter has kind of changed color. So it went from kind of a yellow to like a little bit of a white. And um, that just helps it get that like fluffiness. And then now we're going to add the eggs. So it says to add the eggs one at a time and beat in between them. So I'm going to grab the eggs. Actually, it takes four eggs, which is quite a, quite a few for a cake. Um, but we'll get that. I like to crack the eggs into a bowl before I do um, get into the actual recipe, just in case I get a little bit of a shell or anything like that. And crack the egg into the bowl, and then I'm going to throw it in. So we're going to do this four times. Clean the beaters when I am doing this. I generally will like lift it up a little bit and let it go. That's why a deep bowl is really nice for baking. So crack another one and throw it in. number three. You pretty much repeat the steps until you're done with your eggs. So before I do the last one, I'm just going to like push the sides down just to make sure everything is actually being incorporated. And then the last egg goes in. You can use vanilla extract, which is what this is, or you can use the pure vanilla. They taste pretty much the same. The vanilla extract is a little bit less um, flavorful, or it doesn't have as much of a smell as the natural stuff, but both will work. So I just like to push down the sides every time I'm done mixing in a new ingredient. And then we're going to add one tablespoon of vanilla. At this point, the mixture is going to look like it separates. So that means that you get like little pieces of um, butter and egg and that sort of thing kind of coming apart. It doesn't look very appealing. That's okay. our flour and our milk alternating times. Do you want to come and help with that, Mr. Curtis? Sure. What would you like me to do? Um, well, we need one and one quarter cups of milk. So we're going to use a liquid measuring cup for that. 
Yeah, and we're going to take turns adding... Um, one and one quarter? Yeah. So it'll be one and then that line. Oh, there it is. Okay. And so we're going to take turns adding the flour mixture into here and the milk so that it doesn't get super thick. Because if we added all of the flour in, it would be more like a bread dough than a cake dough. Okay. Once we have that measured out, I'm just going to start with the flour because it's already a little bit liquidy. So I'm going to put this in in three different batches. So any suggestions if you're really cooking by yourself? If you're by yourself, you can just add it. It's just you have to stop mixing. So I'm just going to have Mr. Carlos add in the milk as I mix. Just to, um, make sure you have three. That way I just don't have to stop because it's a lot faster this way. One thing about cooking is that when you do it with partners or friends, it's a good way to get to know people. Yeah, that's very true. Okay, so I'm adding my second batch of flour. And Mr. Carlos is going to add a little bit of milk in there so I don't get like kind of a dough. You can see how it gets a little bit thick. Uh, just a little bit more than last time. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so then I'm going to go again. Mm, mm, mm. Okay, and then we're going to do the last time because you can see that it's all incorporated in all mixed together. So I'm going to throw the rest of this in. And there we go, Mr. Carlos. Throw it in. Good with the rest? Yep. Good. All right. You may want to reduce your speed a little bit if you're not super familiar with baking because the flour might come up and uh, <laughs> get you. I think everyone's done that a couple times in the yeah. kitchen. <laughs> so you might just want to start with a lower speed and then speed it up. And you can see that the dough is kind of all coming together. I'm just going to scrape down the sides and then mix it again. And then you don't want to over mix uh, cake dough because then it kind of loses its air a little bit. Just like dough, like when you're cooking bread or something like that. All right. I'll mix it down, scrape my spatula off, and mix it one more time. Okay, so I'm gonna I have to grease and flour the pan before I put the cake batter in. And so basically I took one of the sticks of butter and if I was at home, I would just use the margarine and use a paper towel with margarine on it. But because we have this, it's a little bit easier. You just take the stick of butter and I'm just going to kind of paint the pan with it. And I'm going to go all around on the sides and everything. So you really, this is very important because otherwise the cake will not come out of this pan. Um, maybe your pans at home might have a film or a coating on them that helps that, but we don't have that. So we are going to grease and flour it. So basically you want to get it in all the corners, all the sides, because the cake will rise. And so you have to account for that. You can't just get it in the bottom. Okay, so we grease it up really well. And then I always cut the end off of that butter because it's touched the pan. And so um, instead of using it uh, for that, and then just take it again and get in really in that side, in the corners, because that's where the cake is going to stick. Okay. And then I don't want to have any excess, so I also want to kind of make sure that that's not going to be like a greasy corner. Okay. All right. And then I'm going to take just a little bit of flour. I'm going to put it in there. You kind of have to do a dance a little bit here because you got to wiggle it around and get it up on the sides. 
down. Okay, and then you take it over to the garbage can because obviously you don't want all that flour in there. It'll make the cake super dry. And you just want to dump it out. Take a look, make sure there's no kind of extra. Tap it a little bit. This is when you know that you grease the pan really well because it's all white. Okay, and then we're just going to pour the cake in. I'm going to take my batter, scoop it into the pan. And you want to make sure it's spread out. You kind of help it along. This is a thicker batter than some cakes um, because you can actually do this one on the fire if you have a Dutch oven. And you just use some coals and you can um, have it there. So this will be a really nice, easy cake to do. You can have the batter ready to go or just have the basics. There's nothing real special in this batter, so you probably have it in your camper. So could you make uh, or put all the ingredients and say store it in the fridge before you take it out to the campfire? Um, I wouldn't store it at all together. You could. Um, it just might not rise as good, but you could put all the dry ingredients together and then all the wet ingredients together mixed and keep them separate until you're ready to go. Okay, so basically I usually use a knife to kind of scrape everything down. And you want to make sure everything's a little bit, pretty much level in the pan. And then you put it in the oven.